Seeing someone you care about hurting can be difficult and stressful. Pain can limit anyone's ability to do everyday activities and can be made worse if a person has anxiety or depression. But the good news is, cancer pain can be treated. You play an important role in helping your loved one describe and report their pain so they can get the relief they need to remain comfortable. Having cancer does not always mean having pain, but when cancer affects body parts such as the muscles, spine, bones, and certain organs, it can cause pressure and pain. Cancer surgery, treatments, and procedures can also cause pain. As the caregiver of someone experiencing cancer-related pain, here are a few things to keep in mind. Cancer pain may not always be completely relieved, but you can work with your loved one's care team to be sure it is lessened as much as possible. Knowing how to report and describe pain helps the care team know how to treat it. It can take time and different medications to get good pain control. There are many kinds of medicines, different ways to take them, and non-drug methods that can help relieve pain too. And developing and regularly reviewing a pain control plan is essential to good pain management. When you visit the doctor with your loved one, you can expect to be asked if they're having pain and other questions that help the care team know more about it. Remember that the person with cancer is the one who can accurately gauge and describe their pain. Many care teams have a standard way of measuring pain and usual questions they ask. You can prepare for this by asking your loved one what level of pain they feel, starting with zero for no pain, five for moderate pain, and 10 as the worst pain ever. Another way to ask is to use the FACES scale that shows what level of pain a person is feeling based on their facial expression. You can print the FACES scale for ready access when assessing their pain throughout the day. The care team will create a pain control plan that may vary depending on the type and severity of pain your loved one is having. It's very important to remember the goal of a pain control plan is to stay ahead of the pain rather than wait for it to happen before treating it. One way to take medicine is if pain is happening occasionally at a certain time of day or with a certain activity. In some of these cases, the prescription may be written as PRN, which means to take as needed. Most cancer pain is treated by taking medicine around the clock, meaning it is taken regularly at certain times of the day and night. If the medicine is prescribed to be taken a certain number of times per day, start a dose when the person wakes up and divide doses during the 24 hour day into equal time intervals. It may be hard to avoid a dose being taken during the night, but it's important to make sure doses are not skipped to avoid pain starting again. Sometimes long acting pain medicines are taken around the clock as was just described, and then short acting medicine may be taken as needed for breakthrough pain. When this is ordered, the long-lasting medicine, which usually lasts 6 to 12 hours, is taken on a regular schedule. But if pain is occurring between doses, a short-acting medicine can also be taken every 2 to 4 hours as needed for better relief. This combination of medication is typically used to control what is called breakthrough pain. It's extremely important to keep a pain diary to track how pain is being managed over time. We've created one for you that can be easily downloaded and printed at cancer.org slash pain. You'll be able to log the type of medication used and at what time so that you can easily organize how their pain is managed throughout the day. Let's do a quick overview of pain medication. Opioids are narcotics that are used to treat moderate to severe pain. It's important to remember that opioids can be safely prescribed and used to help control cancer pain. They're often a necessary part of pain relief for cancer patients. However, these medications should be used and stored with great care and must be taken exactly as they're prescribed. One of the most common side effects is constipation. Make sure to confirm with your loved one's doctor about the need to take a stool softener on a daily basis so that this can be prevented. Non-opioids are not narcotics and are used to control mild to moderate pain. Examples are acetaminophen and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs. Acetaminophen is commonly known as Tylenol and is designed specifically to reduce pain. Side effects from usual doses of this medication are uncommon. 
NSAIDs are commonly known as Motrin or Advil and are designed to reduce inflammation that causes pain. They can be effective in treating bone pain caused by cancer, especially when combined with opioids. NSAIDs can irritate the stomach and may increase the risk for bleeding. Detailed information about these medications, their side effects, and other cancer-related pain topics can be found at cancer.org pain. Lastly, let's talk about some practical non-drug ways to help manage your loved one's pain. Try warm baths or washcloths or hot water bottles on painful areas. Heat can relax muscles and gives a sense of comfort. But be careful of the temperature if your loved one has neuropathy from treatment. And remember to avoid areas where radiation has been given. Use cool cloths or ice. Cooling the skin and muscles can help to soothe pain, especially when there's inflammation or swelling. Again, be careful of the temperature if your loved one has neuropathy. And ask your loved one's doctor about physical rehab. Physical therapy, stretching, and exercise may help reduce pain and improve energy levels in certain people. It's important to remember that pain control is a process of trial and error. Your help and collaboration with your loved one and the care team is instrumental in creating a pain control plan that works. Thanks for watching. For more videos in our caregiver series, be sure to check out cancer.org/caregivers.